Acer had a few gaming and creator laptops on show at CES 2020, including the highly requested Triton 300. So I've finally had a chance to get a first look at that, as well as the addition of 300Hz panels and the new Concept D7 Easel Pro, which features a much better designed hinge mechanism compared to the older model. Let's take a closer look. Acer's Predator Triton 300 gaming laptop was actually announced in September 2019 at IFA. I haven't been able to get my hands on one to review yet, so this was my first time seeing it. And given so many of you have wanted to see it on the channel, I thought it was a good opportunity. The Triton 300 is available with 9th gen Intel i5 or i7 processor, and Nvidia GTX 1650 graphics. Interestingly, it's got a 15.6 inch 1080p 144Hz screen. So with 1650 graphics, you'll only take full advantage of that in either esports titles, or more demanding games with lower settings. Hopefully I get the chance to benchmark it someday. In terms of design, it seems to share a number of design aspects with the more powerful Triton 500. It's all black, metal, with various blue accenting all over. On the left, there's a Kensington lock, gigabit ethernet, mini display port and HDMI outputs, USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, no Thunderbolt, and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports. On the right, there's a 3.5mm audio combo jack, USB 2.0 Type-A port, status LEDs, the power input, and air exhaust vent. The back is just air exhaust, however it's coloured blue to match the rest of the machine. The lid is all clean matte black, with the Predator logo in the centre. And underneath was fairly clean too, with air intake vents towards the back and the speakers down the front left and right sides. Inside, the keyboard looks similar to the Helios 300 or Triton 500. The touchpad looks the same too. There's also a turbo button up the back for quickly boosting performance too. The weight and dimensions listed on Acer's website put it very close to the Helios 300, and given that is available with much more powerful specs, it probably makes more sense for most people. Of course, depending on the price. But in many cases, the 1660 Ti is worth paying a bit more for. Unfortunately, I was told that the Triton 300 won't be sold in the US, so if you've been waiting for one, you might need to look at a different model instead. I'm also not sure what this means in terms of getting a review unit. It'll likely depend on if it's sold in my country. Acer announced at CES that the Triton 500 has been updated to now include a 1080p 300Hz option. Given this is still laptop hardware, to have a chance of hitting 300 FPS, you're really going to need to be playing esports titles at minimum settings. So most people will probably be fine with a lower refresh rate, especially if 300Hz comes with an associated price premium. Unfortunately, AMD weren't refreshing any of their existing AMD-based laptops like the Nitro 5 at this time with the new Ryzen 4000 series CPUs, so there wasn't a whole lot more for me to cover on the gaming side of things. Outside of gaming though, Acer had the new Concept D 7 Easel Pro laptop for creators. There's a huge improvement to the hinge with this version over the older one. If you saw my Triton 900 videos, you'll recall the hinges sticking out the sides along with the thick bezels required to provide structural integrity. With the new model, that design is no longer required. Basically with the new hinge, you still get the same range of motion, but rather than having arms on the sides, there's a metal hinge running along the whole panel. Otherwise, this new version of the Concept D7 has some nice extra improvements. For me, it was the addition of an SD card slot on the front, and I was told this would be coming to other Concept D laptops in future, which makes sense given how many creators rely on this. There's also a pen built into the bottom section of the hinge which can be used for drawing on the 4K touchscreen. On the older model, this was held under the top of the screen with magnets, so this seems like a good design change. It's a Wacom EMR pen, so it doesn't have a battery to charge. The screen has a 400 nit brightness, 100% Adobe RGB color gamut, and a delta E of less than 2. The particular model I was filming is the Pro model, meaning it's got Nvidia Quadro graphics rather than GeForce, and also has the option of Intel Xeon CPU with ECC memory. On the left, there's a full-size DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 output, USB Type-A port, Ethernet, and power input. On the right, there's a Kensington lock, second USB Type-A port, two Type-C Thunderbolt ports, 3.5mm audio combo jack, and the power button, which is also a fingerprint scanner. The interior is pretty standard, and there appears to be some air ventilation above the keyboard. The bottom is basically just air intake vents towards the back, and the speakers are near the front left and right sides. 
The top looks a little weird due to the custom hinge which runs along the entire width, but I much prefer this over the old design which took up far more space. In the US, the Easel Pro will start at $3100 US dollars, while the non-pro, so without quadro graphics, starts at $2700 US dollars. Given it's available with Intel 10th gen CPUs, we probably won't see it for a little while longer. Let me know what you thought about these new laptops from Acer, and I'm really interested in particular to hear what you think about them not having refreshed Ryzen gaming laptops. And finally, if you're new to the channel, get subscribed for the rest of my CES 2020 coverage.